So where are you from? From Florida. Florida? Mm -hmm. And why are you here? I'm here because I have, um, my, I can't open my mouth more than, it feels like an inch or so. Yeah. <clears throat> and if I chew anything, I, it hurts my left side and right. um, I can't eat anything crunchy and I have a pain in my left ear. Okay, and this is something that's been going on and off for quite some time? Uh, on and off mildly for the past 15 years, but constant for the past two months. And you associated that with eating a burrito one night, mm -hmm. am I right? Yeah, yeah, late <laughs> at night, not paying attention. Taco Bell maybe? Or? Yeah, <laughs> it's actually a frozen burrito. <laughs> fro oh, where's the pain? Can you point to where the pain is? Yes, the pain is here and it's in my, deep in my ear but it's mostly, uh, it's right here. Okay, so forwards of your ear canal primarily? Yes. And a little bit within the ear canal itself. Mm -hmm. Is, have you ever had like a car wreck or a whiplash or anything like that mm -hmm. going on? How old were you? Um, I was 16. Did you have problems after that? Um, I never got treatment for it. I just got rear-ended and, um, and the reason I ask is because uh, whiplash trauma uh, not only damages like vertebrae, cervical mm -hmm. vertebrae, it can damage the joint. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that that's why you're, you have a TM problem, mm -hmm. temporomandibular joint problem, because you know there's there's little fibers that hold the cartilage between the skull bone and the jaw bone, the temporomandibular joint, just like there's little fibers that hold the disc under the vertebrae. Mm -hmm. Most docs don't know to look for this, but um, you know the pain is usually pretty acute with the cervical stuff, and it's usually something that takes a while to show up in the TMJ. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I'm, I think I mentioned this to you yesterday. Um, there's two halves to the disc, the cartilage. Mm -hmm. There's a lateral half and a medial half. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. The lateral half is readily torn, like through the bite or you know, dental work that went south, let's say, or the bite's not right, but the medial pole, you have to have trauma to the jaw. Like you have to get thumped really hard, mm -hmm. like fall on your chin or hit a steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Or the whiplash from the back kind of thing, that can do this stuff. Mm -hmm. It can tear that medial ligament. If that's the case, it makes things a little less predictable. Because once you've torn the medial ligament, it's not as conducive to a, like a quick fix. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No, I think it was after I got my wisdom teeth. It was within a year. Okay. Is when, um, when did the wisdom teeth come out? How old they, were you then? They came out, I was 23. Okay, here's another possibility for you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when surgeons cut out wisdom teeth or tonsils or whatever they're doing, with it, or even just a normal surgery where they intubate you, if they overcrank your mandible, they can tear that medial ligament too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe they got it. You got it started with the car wreck, and then they tore the rest of it after the wisdom teeth. I hope not. Mm -hmm. um, but now let's go to the positive. If this is just muscle spasming, this will be an easy fix. You know, if it's just lateral pull, this should work like rapidly and quickly for you. Mm -hmm. You clench like this. Yeah. That hurts mm -hmm. on both sides or one side. M mostly my left. But a little bit right. A little bit right, but mostly left. Do you have any tension in your neck or? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Both sides? A lot. Um, yeah, both sides. Is it hard to like back up the car? Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, try the ice water. How sensitive are your teeth? Zero to 10. Mm. Pretty bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say nine to 10. Is that bad? Mm -hmm. So if and you go to a restaurant and ask for ice water, iced tea, you ask for a straw all the time, mm -hmm. don't you? And are you aware that that's abnormal or you no. really thought about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that's that was every, uh, getting old. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Um, chewing gum. Trouble? I haven't chewed gum in probably 10 years. Because? Because it hurts. It, it's tiring? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tiring. On both sides or on okay. one side? Mm -hmm. Who have you seen for all this? I have seen three doctors in Florida. Physicians or dentists? Dentists. Okay. And um, one of them gave me, um, he did some adjustments and gave me a splint, but I'd wake up and my bottom teeth would be really sore from the splint and he'd adjust it and I tried again and after three times of adjusting, my bottom teeth felt like they were loose in the morning because mm -hmm. it was pushing on them and I just said, I can't do this anymore. So I threw it away. 
that was $800. And then I went to another one, and he um, also made me a night guard, and I didn't like how it fit, and he adjusted it two or three times, um, threw that away, another $800. And then I went to a doctor who did a whole, um, he gave me a splint, he um, did the tensing, the, the electro things on my face and neck, and I had to go back, I think it was every couple weeks for almost a year. And I actually felt pretty good after that, yeah. the tensing, I felt relaxed and um, it was good, but he told me I had to wear his mouth guard day and night, eating and everything all the time. And I just didn't like eating with it. It was a mess and uncomfortable and, um, and I'm in sales and I can't, I just can't have it in my mouth all day. So I do like that mouth guard. I've had it for about four years now and I wear it every single night, but only at night. Okay. And I feel like if I don't have it in my mouth, I'm going to crack and break my teeth because I clench so hard. So clenching is what you're acutely aware of? Yes. You wake up in the morning, sore as can be, right? Oh, yeah. Like in the lower jaw area? Mm -hmm. Can you point to where it's sore? Yes. Yeah, that's where the master inserts in the mandible. And I take a bite of food and I just feel this rush of, I guess it's lactic acid, but it's like pain, painful. Yeah. Every My first bite is painful. But again, you have, you'll, you'll feel it on the right side some too, but it's overshadowed uh -huh. by the left. Only the past couple months. I've never really noticed a difference until two months ago got when it. the left got really bad. Can you bite your nails? Like your teeth come together up front? I can't bite my nails right Cannot? now. Cannot? No. And I've always been a nail biter and I haven't been biting my nails in a long time. Probably in a few, five, about four years. Because you just can't get them together. Mm -hmm. And it hurts. And when I'm trying to bite down on my fingernail hurts. So it's a good thing for my nails. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, the problem is when you, you get a sudden anterior open bite, that could, that usually means that there's a breakdown in the joint in the back, which, you know, again, it's pointing towards things that may not respond as rapidly as I'd like. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I have to cover all bases. And the front teeth not being able to come together, nail biting scenario. When did that go away? How long ago? Um. It was when I was seeing the tensing doctor yeah. and he did whatever he did okay. to change the bite. And when I was wearing that thing, I felt like my feet did, my teeth didn't fit okay. together. That's good news now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's splints will intrude teeth or flare them out. So it may not be breakdown from the back. It might be the splint. Because mm -hmm. splints move teeth orthodontically, so to speak, too. Mm -hmm. They'll shift and drift them. Mm -hmm. So that's a, whew, okay. No mm -hmm. guarantees. We don't have an MRI, but based on what you just said. All right, I'm not as worried about it. Um, okay, good. How'd you find us? My husband found you online. Real quick, open for me and relax. Is this sore up here when I palpate or is that just a finger? No, it's just a finger. Good. How about I go to this side? Just a finger? Yeah, it's not that bad. Good. Do you ever get like a spasm underneath your lower, like underneath your tongue down here? Um. Not a spasm, but I definitely can feel like a dull aching. Okay. Do you ever stick your tongue between your teeth? Yes. Is that like a lot? You catch yourself yeah. doing that? Like, what the heck am I doing? Yeah. Okay. Like constantly. Your, your splint will not fit after today, probably. Okay. You need to know that. That's fine. Okay. Because, I mean, maybe it might, but I doubt it will. Because I, if I have to add to something, mm -hmm. is it fitting the top yeah. or the bottom? It's bottom. Bottom? It might. Yeah. But I... I We'll just see. Okay? Yeah, okay. I'm not going to worry about that because I want to worry about doing the best job I can for what I do for you. So, mm -hmm. worst case, you can at least rule that out. Mm -hmm. Because if my stuff doesn't work, in my experience, it's time to see Piper, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one step closer, and we don't usually see that. I had told you yesterday, like, your bony stuff wasn't that broken down. Mm -hmm. You know, the spacing wasn't perfect, but things didn't look too bad. Mm -hmm. So, okay. well, you know, and you would think that, let's say when you were 16, you had the car wreck, the whiplash, or when you were 24 or whatever you were, when you had the wisdom teeth out, that's only been a few years ago, of course, right? But yeah. by now you would think that if it was bone on bone, you'd start seeing some real wear problems, mm -hmm. like arthritic change, and we don't see that. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Yeah, that is a good thing. So that's suggestive that we've still got something, if not cartilage, we've got the stuff behind cartilage sitting there doing mm -hmm. its job, so to speak, making up for it. So, okay, so let's see, open big as you can. So what, about two fingers? That's about all you got, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Bite on hard. 
break and open. Beautiful. Back on hard. Break. Open. Beautiful. It's probably not different. I just want to know. Same. Um. Hard to tell. You're telling me nine out of ten, not ten minutes ago. What's it now? It's um. It's not as bad. It's a little different, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Six, it's actually five, more on the left, eight. on the right than the left. Right, because we really haven't worked the right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say probably a six. Notice I've only been adjusting as you're swinging out left. Uh huh. And you just said the cold's gone over here, or it's less. Yeah. And this has still got it going on, right? Mm-hmm. But which side did I work? This side. Mm-hmm. See, it's related. <laughs> Let me hurt you. Can you go a little bit more? Or no? mm. That's mm. all you got? Mm. Yeah, it's not painful. Anywhere? I don't get that shock. What do you get at 0 to 10? Do it one more time to be safe. Give me a real number. Which you really think this. Because 30 or 40 minutes ago, you were 9 out of 10, you told me. Yeah, no, that's like a 3. Yeah, so it's definitely yeah. usually different. Uh huh. You could probably get by without a straw enough, couldn't you? Uh huh. It still hurts back. Right behind this thing. Right. But, what but about, only when I open it. What about down where your thumb is right now? No. <laughs> yeah, that was your chief complaint. Mm -hmm. You started yeah. with that and then you said in my ear canal. Yes, yeah. So that's See still the, up there. But down here it's not. See, the problem is ear canal, two thirds of the innervation is cervical. Mm -hmm. Within, remember I told you that yesterday? Yeah. Um, but where you were pointing earlier, that's the master where it inserts into the. Uh, the mandibular angle. Mm -hmm. That is masticatory muscle. That is dental, oral, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Medical, I don't know what you want to call this. But my point is, see, we're addressing that. Yeah. This deep thing in the ear, mm -hmm. a third of the time it could be this stuff, but two thirds of the time it's the next stuff. Okay. Not my thing, I can't tell you. you know? Right. I feel relaxed. Differently? Mm -hmm. Do you feel kind of sleepy? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is this is what I'm after. Right, you know, grinding down teeth would mu make your because, face muscles relax. It doesn't. Okay, it's possible because teeth are sensory organs. They're telling brain where lower jaw is in space mm -hmm. and in time, and through interactions between top and bottom teeth in time, <clears throat> the central nervous system senses like what's going on down there. And sometimes if there's too much rub, say, on back teeth against one another in time, brain knows that that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to get off back teeth rapidly. It's supposed to get onto the front teeth quickly. With you, it was kind of getting on front teeth quickly, but the way it got there was not the shortest distance between two points. It was very erratic. Mm. So even though your timing was reasonably fast, the pattern was not. So with T-Scan alone, you had good timing pattern I could kind of tell was a little bit off but when I look at you with the MG the muscle I can tell it's pissed mm -hmm. from my experience which is pretty vast and a combination of force time and muscle I can tweak what the muscles of mastication are doing and where are they located in the face mm -hmm. and then other facial muscles kind of they're kind of talking so when something when your neighbor's tense you're gonna be tense mm -hmm. when you relax he, he relaxes mm -hmm. Does that kind of makes sense so yeah. the cold thing is because when the when the when you're on your back teeth too long in time and the patterns are wrong, the teeth are screaming to brain, you're gonna break me. So it kind of lowers the threshold whereby you'll feel cold. It's crazy. Yeah. That's called FDH. That's what I wrote that uh, chapter textbook about. The, the mm -hmm. textbook in the chapter mm -hmm. last January. Yeah, no one's ever seen this before. Because mm -hmm. no one goes here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, you tell me, you were a 9 out of 10. Do it again. Yeah, I mean, my front teeth are more sensitive than my back teeth now. So okay. that's, it's definitely down to two or three. You see, and the funny thing with you, you've got recession three or four places, mm -hmm. and you have exposed dentin. The enamel's completely wore off before I even touched you today on like three teeth. So, Normal theory for hypersensitive teeth mm -hmm. doesn't apply here. 
Mm -mm. See, the reality is what they think is right with hypersensitivity and like Sensodyne and all these toothpaste that supposedly knock it out. You know, I shouldn't say names, but yeah. you know, they're doing what they do based on the research. Well, here's new research. Mm -hmm. You don't need that. You need to measure muscle mm -hmm. for some time. So the cool thing about this is that cold sensitivity is an indicator of whether or not the muscles are over torquing the teeth. So I use this plus EMG plus T-scan to determine when I'm done. Because I don't want to take a lot away at all. We've done almost nothing for you, believe it or not. That's just minuscule stuff. Mm -hmm. And but it's it's a, it's all about timing. It's all about patterns. Mm -hmm. and it's all about understanding the neurology behind it. So the fact that you're less sensitive now is a great indicator that I've done everything I can. If it's not disc, mm -hmm. indirectly I can kind of calm the lateral pterygoid muscle down that pulls on disc. But if you're like try to open now, and it looks it might be a hair better. You gotta mm -hmm. measure that. Does it hurt to open like it? It's it, yeah. I mean it's sore. Yeah. Is it different than it was this morning? It's a little bit better, yeah. but it's still tight. I got you. Yeah. Um, my advice is to just give it give it the month. Okay. Go home, see what happens. Your your splint actually may still fit, but I wouldn't wear it. Okay. No, I, I don't want to if I don't have to. I will, in my world, unless mm -hmm. you have structural problems, there's no need for it. Okay. And in my world, I've eliminated the tooth component to the joint. So mm -hmm. why would you wear a splint? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my world. Okay. Let's say it does turn into a surgery yeah, thing. Mm -hmm. Here's a positive. Your your uh, your cone beam data, the, the bone stuff, it looks so good mm -hmm. that you know it's not a nightmare. Nightmares are when the bone's all broken down and the cartilage is messed up. Okay. That's a nightmare. That's like rib grafts, bad stuff. Ugh. Yeah. A case like yours, I'm thinking, I'm not a expert, not my thing, but um, from what I know, I'm guesstimating worst case is he either removes the disc or leaves it. If you're really lucky, he pull it back up on top of the bone, okay? And it's salvageable, the old disc. Mm -hmm. But if it did get torn back in the 20s, let's say, um, and it's all shriveled up and it's like that rug that will straighten out, because mm -hmm. that's what happens over time. It starts shriveling up and shrinking, and it no longer fits. So he cuts it out, he takes a little bit of fat from your abdomen, and he puts it up there, and it replaces your cartilage. Huh. And it increases your joint dimension. Now, the one bummer about that is, you know, after that surgery, it's not a bummer, it's not that bad, but after that surgery, it's going to always alter your bite. Mm -hmm. So, is that a bad thing? Not, not necessarily, but you might need to get adjusted again. Okay. Either back home or by me. Mm -hmm. But by me is a different animal than back home. Mm -hmm. So, that's going to be up to you and listen to what he says. Yeah, I feel re very relaxed. 